Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, December 22nd, 2023. Let's get into it. So the, the I tell you, man, <laughs> hey, all you can do is go around the horn every single day. Uh, why are U.S. troops still in Syria and Iraq? We've got the Houthi rebels that are attacking, uh, shipping, and they basically, they've said, uh, bring it on, you United States. We're ready to, to take you on. So they said they've got their $2,000 drones, and they're going to put them up against our $2 million missiles. And guess what? Those uh, fleet carrier groups, they only have so many of those $2 million missiles. So, and then you... Yemen, you got to understand, they're used to being bombed. They've been bombed for God knows how long by the United States, probably since 2014. So most of their stuff is underground. So they're, they're telling the United States, bring it on, bring it on, baby. So we'll see where that goes. Um, and the interesting thing is they're letting the uh, Russian ships through, uh, which, you know, I guess they're Somehow they, they've got the surveillance to be able to identify. I mean, imagine, I mean, a ship out at sea, how do they know which ships are Russian? Which, I, I guess, you know, if, if if I was a tanker, I would put a Russian flag, <laughs> just like the pirates used to do back in the day, put a Russian flag up on my ship so that the Yemens would let me through the Straits of, uh, the, whatever, the, the area there. I can't remember what it's called. Uh, but I just thought it was very interesting that they're letting the Russian ships through, but anything going to Europe or uh, Israel, they're, uh, they're, they're blowing the hell out of it or trying to. So uh, we'll get on to the next thing. Um, well, actually, let's, let's get the first video here. Uh, this is a video about Texas is sending a lot of the illegal aliens to uh, Chicago. Now, this person, I mean, this is what Democrats do, and I want you to get the style of what what it is they do to try to shame everything, because remember, Chicago is a sanctuary city, and they've said, we want the illegal aliens coming here. So what he's painting the picture here in this video is, he's saying that they got no shoes on, and they're, they're all decrepit and everything. Have you seen the videos from the border? These are young men, fully, I mean, buff, you know, a hell of a lot better shape than I'm in, uh, fully dressed with great shoes. These are the people that, you know, they're sending to Chicago. And here this guy is, is painting this lie. Let's watch that video. The issue is not just how we respond in the city of Chicago. It's the fact that we have a governor, a governor, an elected official in the state of Texas that is placing families on buses without shoes, cold, wet, tired, hungry, afraid, traumatized, and then they come to the city of Chicago where we have homelessness, we have mental health clinics that have been shut down and closed, you have people who are seeking employment. The, the governor of Texas needs to take a look in the mirror of the chaos that he is causing for this country. This is not just a Chicago dynamic. He is attacking our country. All right, so that's the first video of Chicago sending uh, everything to, uh, I mean, Texas sending it to Chicago. So uh, then we got uh, the press. <laughs> I was watching a clip today. I don't know who this psycho Democrat was. Uh, she was calling the Republicans the Confederate Party and, and accusing Trump of being a Confederate. I guess as they tear down the Confederate statues and everything, do they even know anything about history? The Democrat Party is the Confederate Party. They were the they were the party of the South, the party of slavery, and, and they're accusing Republicans. I mean, how stupid are people in this country? Oh my God, they must be dumber than a bag of stones. And that she's accusing uh, Trump of being a Confederate or the, the Republican Party being Confederates. No, the Republicans were the ones that defeated the Democrats back in the Civil War. Oh my, and, the, and the Republicans were the ones that put the 14th Amendment in to say that Confederates couldn't serve. See, basically, they said Democrats couldn't serve uh, in, in political offices. And now the Democrats are turning that around and saying, oh, well, we're going to use the 14th Amendment to, to, in Chica in whatever, uh, Colorado to say he can't run <laughs> for, for office because it's an insurrectionist. 
Oh, I, I tell you, the, the, the stupidity or the, what are, the absurdity of the world, isn't it? The absurdity of the Democrat Party just knows no bounds. There was a, a video today, and this is, this is a good question because I saw a couple of them. Uh, and I, don't, I can't tell you the congressman's name, but he put together a, a, a list of things for the Fed. Remember, the Federal Reserve is not a federal agency. Okay, they are, they are a private company that uh, Woodrow Wilson back in 2013 put in place of our monetary system. And so the question is, do we have any gold in the United States? As, as our financial system is going to implode, probably within the next year, uh, do we have any gold? And, and on that note, China, India, I mean, a lot of the nations are buying up gold in record amounts because... We are artificially repressing the, the cost of gold and silver here in the United States to try to preserve our financial system, but it ain't going to last much longer. And so by, I guess maybe we might find something out because he gave the Federal Reserve a time deadline of January 15th to basically respond because uh, nobody's been down in Fort Knox. Nobody knows what's there. I mean, you understand that, right? I mean, there's not, we have no clue. Uh, whether we have any gold left in the United States, uh, although you can still buy Silver Eagles. Uh, by the way, there's been some good videos on uh, on YouTube about SD Bullion and their history, and that's where I've been buying all of my, well, when I can. I, I've, I've been too poor <laughs> the, last, the last three months to buy anything as far as precious metals goes. But I just found that very interesting. Let's get to the next video. This is a, uh, a video about... Israel blowing up a Catholic church in Gaza. Blowing up a Catholic church in Gaza. Where is the Pope on this? Why wouldn't he say anything? Let's, let's just take a look at that. Israel has rejected claims that it deliberately targeted a Catholic church in Gaza in an incident in which two women were allegedly killed by an IDF sniper. The Gazan church says the mother and daughter were walking to the so-named Sister of Convent, which is part of the Holy Family Catholic Parish, where they were caught in a hail of gunfire. Now, in a church statement, they say that there was no warning given, and they've also accused the IDF of, IDF of killing the women in, quote, cold blood. Israel has denied all allegations, insisting the IDF doesn't target civilians. Pope Francis has called the incident an act of terrorism. To Shiro Oji, unarmed civilians have been bombed and shot at. Some say it's terrorism, it's war. Yes, it is war, it is terrorism. This is why scripture says that God stops wars, breaks bows and breaks spears. Let us pray to the Lord for peace. While this incident occurred in the area where the two women were reportedly killed, the reports received do not match the conclusion of our initial review, which found that the IDF troops were targeting spotters in enemy lookouts. The IDF takes claims of strikes on sensitive sites very seriously, especially churches that are the holy sites for the Christian faith. The IDF directs its operations against the Hamas terrorist organization and not against civilians, regardless of their religious affiliation. And while the IDF also insists it doesn't target holy sites and takes claims of strikes on such sensitive cultural sites very seriously, the Palestinian Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities is demanding that the UN's cultural arm, this is UNESCO, takes urgent action. The crime of targeting and destroying archaeological sites should spur the world and UNESCO into action to preserve this great civilizational and cultural heritage. Well, Israel is deliberately targeting Palestinian cultural heritage. That's according to the Euromed Human Rights Monitor. This includes strikes on archaeological sites, historical buildings, places of worship and museums. While Palestinian officials estimate that more than 100 mosques have been destroyed since October the 7th. Now, the Euromed group stresses that international humanitarian law strictly prohibits the deliberate targeting of cultural and religious sites which are not legitimate military targets. Now, the IDF is alleged to have targeted the historic 
Al Amari Mosque. Uh, this is a mosque in the center of Gaza City, destroying its minaret, which dated back. 1400 years. The religious site is also the largest and the oldest mosque in the enclave. Now, it's also been alleged that three historic churches in Gaza were also hit by the Israeli army. One of them was the long standing Church of St. Porphyrus, uh, which dates back to 407 AD. Now, the Israeli army also damaged the Al Balachaya archaeological site northwest of Gaza. As a city that dates back to 800 BC, leaving Jerusalem's deputy mayor to explain the targeting of these on a British radio show. It's reported to start shooting, having snipers outside a church. I don't, I saw the report this morning. Um, the church, there are no churches in Gaza, so I'm not quite sure where the report. Well, is, is, is there's, talking a, there's about. a Catholic church in there, isn't there? That is. Yeah, is, unfortunately, there are no Christians because they were dry, dro drove, driven out by. Well, there some are, but respectfully, there are Christians because I spoke to an MP yesterday who has family members in the church who are Christians. Well, I don't and know what happened. I don't right. know who was attacked. I didn't see the report. The Christian community of Palestine have been on the receiving end for the last 85 years. This whole notion that there is no Christians in the area, I think, is wishful thinking. This is the plan of the Israelis from day one. It is much easier for Israel to classify this problem not as a national liberation a struggle for Palestinians for the right of self-determination, but of a religious war between the Muslims and the Jews. And this is why they don't want to see anybody who is definitely doesn't fit the stereotype. So this lady uh, is not only, I, I think she knows very well that there are Christians in, in Palestine. For her to come and say there are no Christians in, in Gaza is not something that is uh, correct. And I think, again, is very vicious on her part. Especially, especially that only last month, the Orthodox Church of Gaza was bombed and 18 Christian Orthodox civilians were killed in that church bombing. So for her to say that there are no Christians and that they're all kicked out is simply not correct. Wasn't that very interesting? So that was that's kind of crazy. And uh, no Christians are up, up in arms about it, I guess. Well, maybe uh, the Methodists don't consider Catholics Christians or the Baptists don't consider Catholics Christians. And, and they're all for uh, the Israelis, the Zionists, uh, blowing up a Catholic church. But I, who am I to question anything about that? So uh, let's just keep going down the list. Um, well, we talked about the gold. I uh, talked about... So we're kind of getting... Well, we're getting down to the last couple videos here. I... Well, the media, oh boy, I tell you, they've been going after Russell Brand. <laughs> that poor guy. All he does, I mean, he, he's a leftist. And boy, they eat their own, don't they? They just eat their own. I, I like watching him from time to time. I just wanted to throw that out there for you to, to maybe watch uh, something about him. And uh, and and he's been going on uh, about some things, and, and people have been talking about it. But I want you to watch this video from Redacted. Now, this has a special place in my my history, I, as you know, I'm divorced now. My wife left me, and she wanted me to wear a mask in my own damn house. And uh, and so I, a lot of times I don't like to steal material. This is redacted. I always want to give uh, a, a a tribulation to to whoever I take material from. And this this was a mask shaming video from Redacted on YouTube. Let's watch that now. In fact, one Twitter user put this together recently showing the media absolutely condescending anyone who didn't take the vaccine. Um, and you're right, you guys nailed it. They talk down their nose. They, um, they take a moral, you know, superiority. It's a bit long, so we'll watch a few minutes uh, because your response is just going to be so outraged. Uh, take a look. When the chips are down, these, uh, these civilized people they'll eat each other you are the unvaccinated you are the problem it is the unvaccinated who are the problem period end of story the only people that you can blame the only people you can blame this isn't shaming this is the truth maybe they should be shamed but the unvaccinated it's time for the shot blaming the unvaccinated folks not the regular folks anyone you came into contact with will blame you 
as will the rest of us who've done the right thing by getting vaccinated. Because frankly, we know that we can't trust the unvaccinated. I think it's time to get our moral house in order, Anderson. It's the unvaccinated who are the threat. All the vaccinated folks are going to start wearing masks to protect the unvaccinated folks. It's called a Christian value. You're basically punishing the vaccinated uh, for the the sins of the unvaccinated. People are not behaving honorably. The unvaccinated yes, are yes. basically saying, well, it's open season for me. I can do whatever I want as well. The, the unvaccinated are basically beating their breasts and running around the country saying, ha ah, we don't care. We're living free and so forth. You've been patient. But our patience is wearing thin. The unvaccinated, a group that includes children and people acting like children. And the rest of us are starting to get pissed off. The vaccinated feel the unvaccinated are making me upset or angry. This is not about freedom or personal choice. Well, my freedom is being kind of disturbed here. No, screw your freedom. The other day, Howard Stern weighed in with a much different approach. Take a look. <laughs> when are we going to stop putting up with the idiots in this country and just say, you know, it's mandatory to get vaccinated? <laughs> the freedom. But you're treading on our freedom and you're making other people sick. You're really right. killing so other you people. You get the idea. This goes on for three minutes. You can seek it out online. Um, all of this. And no one ever apologized. They could, ju they could just apologize and say, look, we didn't know. We bought the biopharmaceutical lines that... Yeah, they, they sponsor every one of our segments. Right. This, this Anderson Cooper segment was brought to you by Pfizer. So, what, can you imagine the contrition if they actually came out and they said, yeah, you know, Anderson Cooper 360 is a, is a show sponsored by Pfizer. We just didn't do our homework as journalists and we were, we were taking money from them. We chose not to go through their clinical trials, mm -hmm. not to ask critical questions about their percentage of... Uh, infection rate. We just chose not to, and we believe. So, imagine my ex-wife telling me to wear a mask in the house back during the COVID thing. Oh my God! And then, and then she would get mad because I go to Walmart, and at that time you didn't have to wear a mask at Walmart, at least here in Florida. And then she goes, "Did you wear a mask at, at Walmart?" I said, "Hell no! I didn't wear no damn mask. I ain't wearing a freaking mask." No, I'm not saying YouTube censors. I'm not saying a mask is not a good idea. I'm sure they're going to come back. Uh, well, Fauci's out now, but I'm sure that the new CDC and the World Health Organization is going to say that the wearing of masks is very important, and you probably should. In fact, put a diaper over your head. Wear a whole freaking bodysuit uh, if you're a Democrat. Now, if you're a Democrat, be sure and do that. Uh, we're going to finish off the video right here. Uh, this is a uh, D30 howitzer in action. And then I'm just going to go ahead and, and just transition right into a Russian aircraft in action over Ukraine. I won't talk about Ukraine very much other than that the Russians are advancing pretty damn rapidly at this point. Uh, I don't think uh, Ukraine's going to make it a whole lot longer. We'll see. Peace out. Stay free. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.